You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Hey everybody, uh, Brian Johnson here from the 7 Minute Security Podcast at 7ms.us. Uh, welcome to my first and hopefully not last venture into uh, the land of video production. Uh, this is going to be a walkthrough of owning the Stapler VM, which is a vulnerable machine that you can download off of volnhub.com. So I am going to hide my ugly mug here and uh, we'll get right to it. And I thought since this was my very first video, I would walk through how I approach getting this all set up from kind of from the very tippy top. So uh, I've got my Kali VM booted here. I'm on a I'm on a Mac using VMware Fusion. Here's my stapler VM, the, the vulnerable machine and the target for today. And what I usually do once I get the, 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 the VM all set up with, you know, the network adapter the way I want it and all that kind of stuff, um, I take a snapshot because what I found with some of these is that when you're attacking them, let's say it's got a web service uh, running that you're attacking and something becomes unstable and you need to hard bounce the VM, sometimes the services don't come up properly after that reboot and uh, and then you have to re-import the VM from scratch. So I've gotten bit by that a few times, so now what I do is I take my snapshot, I get everything I, uh, the way I like it, and then uh, power it up. And speaking of when it powers up, I uh, have gotten in the habit of running NetDiscover. Uh, what am I, 16.129.0? I think that's right. To watch what IP that my target machine grabs when it boots up. And sure, I'd like to upgrade you, why not? All right, so we can see that the Stapler VM has grabbed the 143 IP address. So we can just minimize that guy for now and let's go full screen for the next steps. Okay, so one of the first things I do uh, upon knowing the IP of my target is I really like the Sparta program, which does Nmap style things, but also attacks on some extra goodies like it runs a Nikto scan and does some light brute forcing which you can con configure to be more heavy brute forcing if you like. Um, but let's just uh, let's just uh, kind of run this VM through the basics and kind of get a feel for for what we're looking at here. Alright so with Nikto done there looks to be all sorts of delicious goodies that we might want to check out. Uh, FTP web services uh, port 666, Doom, MySQL, HTTP. So I like, as I mentioned, I like that Sparta does some post-discovery tools as well. So uh, did a Nikto crawl here on port 80. Nothing jumps out too much there. Got a screenshot of the web interface, which is nice. MySQL is running on the box. Didn't find any default creds there, but it did find username, uh, username and password of anonymous on the FTP service, so we'll want to log in, see what we can find with that account. Uh, and then another web service on port 12380 with PHP my admin as well as a couple of entries we'll for sure want to explore. Admin 112233 and blog blog, pique my interest. And here's a screenshot of just the landing page of port 12380. So for web services, uh, whenever I see them identified by Nikto, I like to run a derb against both of them. So I'm going to do, uh, one thing there for me. and I'm going to use the W flag, which I believe doesn't stop at warnings, just keeps going, if I remember right. So let's look at user share word lists, uh, derb, I think. And I usually just use big.txt. That was one that f always fared well in uh, the OSCP machines that I was attacking. Okay, so nothing there uh, too sexy. Let's check out what's on port 12380. 
So let's run that, see if we find anything else that grabs our attention. All right, so once derb is done, we can go through its findings, and it looks like there's PHP, my admin. There's also I saw a couple. Oh, an announcements directory, JavaScript directory. Okay, a few other things we might want to check out. And and by the way, I I what I didn't do, and I usually do, is I push my derb results out into a file, something like. TXT, so I can easily review those later. Didn't do that this time, but um, just wanted to mention that. All right, so let's go back to those initial findings from Sparta. I want to take a look at FTP. So it found default account here, login anonymous, password anonymous. Let's go see what we can find there. So I'm going to make a directory called FTP just to kind of keep things organized and let's FTP into 172.16.129.143 with username of anonymous, password of anonymous. And let's see what we have. We have a note called note. So let's grab that. Let's exit that and let's cat note. And it says, Ellie, make sure you update the payload information. Leave it in your FTP account once you are done, John. Okay. I will definitely take that under advisement, as Bruce Willis would say in Die Hard. Uh, for now, let me go to my other sort of warm lead, and that is the web service on port 123. Eight zero. I don't know if we did. We grab a screenshot of that guy. Yeah, we did. Okay, coming soon. Well, let's pull that up on the browser and see what the heck is on there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, accept this for now. Internal index page. Oh, that's right. The subfolder was blog blog. So what do we have on blog blog? Okay, in a tech. A nice Office Space reference there and uh, so it is powered by WordPress here's a couple initial postings let's see hello world that's how you start everything off okay enough monkeying around let's start each week goes by we'll be posting updates every Friday afternoon to make sure we're all on the same page written by John Smith I run this place all right maybe some sort of admin uh, let's just check out the updates not much happened this week the office football match got in the way the only thing which Vicky managed to sort out was to a few WordPress plugins for us. Please be sure to check out their new features. Okay, that's good to know. WordPress plugins can be a lot of fun. Uh, there was a fire in the office yesterday, so things have been put on hold for indefinitely. The only thing we managed to do this week was install this new theme and bake some cookies for Pam's birthday, which is today. Happy birthday. Okay, so let's use Let's use WP scan and do a scan of our little WordPress friend. So I'm going to make another directory called uh, WordPress to capture any findings we get off of that. Now, um, I have open here the WPScan.org page, which will tell you all you need to know about running the WScan, WP scan tool. Um, what you need to be aware of is that if you just kind of run it with the defaults, it does a little bit of a lighter scan. Like it only scans for a subset of potentially problematic or vulnerable plugins and themes. So um, just to make it easier on myself, I have, whoops, let me go to, uh, what did I do there? I made something called WordPress and Noom, just a little shell script. So here's the command I'm going to use. So I'm WP scanning uh, the WordPress URL. I'm going to tack E, enumerate users. Uh, I just chose uh, IDs 1 to 100, just in case there's a super large amount of users. Uh, I'm also going to tack E, enumerate all plugins, AP, okay? And then I'm going to tack E, enumerate T, the themes, okay? So let's just run that and see what kind of fun we can have. Now, this is going to take, this is quite processor intensive, this is going to take uh, quite a bit of time. All right, let's fast forward here to when the tool is done running 
And one thing I just realized I made a mistake in doing in my WordPress theme, I'm sorry, in my WP scan command, I made it enumerate themes, just a regular T here. But looking back at the WP scan arguments, I should have run it with AT to be very thorough. Um, you'll see the theme was identified in this scan, so I don't think I need to go back and rerun it, but uh, just for your future reference, okay? So we go back up to all the WP scan findings. There's just a treasure trove here. It looks like this install of WordPress is very much outdated, version 4.2.1, and a whole slug of SQL injection, side channel attacks, cross site scripting, publish post and market sticky permission issue. Uh, and then we also get down to identifying the theme. Okay, the theme is called Be Host. Doesn't look like there's anything crazy there. But then when it goes to enumerate all plugins, one that it finds is the Advanced Video Embed Embed Videos or Playlists. Um, as a side note, I started going after this vector for a long time, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video if I ever figure out how to follow up, follow all the way through with it. But um, using this as an attack vector, I got as far as figuring out the MySQL root creds, but I could never leverage those further to write out a web shell and actually connect to the box and start privilege escalation. So that's on my to-do list. Um, but what jumped out to me uh, during my first swing through this was the user list that was enumerated. And one particular user that jumped out at me was Ellie because she showed up in that FTP note that we saw a while ago. So what I did is went after her user account using WP scan as the bruter or the brute forcer. So let me show you what that looks like. I think that's called user brute. Okay. So we're using WP scan, same URL. We are targeting username Ellie and we're going to run her through a word list of rocku2.txt, which is just a, a shorter list that I made. I did run Ellie through the regular full Rocku list first. It just took a lot longer. So for the sake of being a little bit more brief, uh, we're going to run her through a shorter word list. So here we go with user brute sh. I think this will only take a couple seconds. Yeah, there we go. It'll grind through there. And hey, what do you know? We've got username Ellie, password Louie. So because she was mentioned earlier in the land of FTP, let's try to FTP to the target as her. Uh, what are we doing? 129, 143? So it's uh, Ellie, Ellie. There we go. Let's take a look at the files. Now to me, as I scroll through here, this looks suspiciously like the slash Etsy folder. There's shadow, password, well, let's see, can we get shadow? No, can we get password? Yes, we can. Let's get the password. Very interesting. Okay, so now what I want to do, now that I know some of these SSH users, um, at least whenever I go through a VM like this, if I get if I get the Etsy password, I, I just fire off in another window some brute force attempts to crack into these SSH accounts. But this list is very dirty. We need to clean it up first. And for that, um, let me let me see. Let me move password a folder back because I think I've got my little password snip shell script. Let me show you what that looks like. And this was just something I think I picked up from OSCP notes, or uh, it, it's on the web quite a bit, but. Uh, let's run, let's run that, and you'll see the result is this nice user list. So actually, let me run this one more time and take the results, put them right into a file called users.txt. Lovely. Okay, so now we can cut Hydra loose. Let's see, do I, I do, I have a Hydra SH. Let me show you what that looks like. Whoops, whoops, if I do that. Okay, so I'm going to hydra the users.txt or the, the users in this text file. And I'm going to use arguments of t 
Tech E N S R, and that's something I don't remember when I picked that up. For again, that is for uh, trying a null password, trying the login name as the password, uh, and or reversing the login. So I think it would try L E and then Y L L E as well. So we're going to set that off, and then I'm going to pause this recording and go to lunch so it can just grind away, and I'll be back with you, well, in a few seconds. All right, so to fast forward a little bit, our Hydra has struck gold, and we have some SSH credentials, and that makes me happy to be alive. So let's give that a try. Let's SSH as select add 1, 2, 3, 4, 16, dot, uh, 143. And, oh, you know what, folks? Here's a little pro tip for you. <laughs> uh, in life in general, but especially with SSHing, it's critical to have the account and password spelled correctly. So let's try that one more time. Fantastic. Here I am as S. Hazlet. And now, from this point, uh, let me... Uh, this guy was having a hard time canceling, so we're just going to let him simmer off to the side somewhere. Um, at this point, I would normally run my enumeration script. So let me show you how I typically do that, if you don't already know how. Um, so Linux Priv Checker, this uh, Python script, as well as Uni Unix Privesc Check, I like to pull down. So here, I'm going to go to temp, because I can usually write there. There's nothing in there, and I'm going to spin up a quick web server. I'm going to use Python Tech M simple HTTP server. Now, if you run this by itself, it's going to default to port 8000. But on several of these VMs, I have found that egress filtering is in place. So having the target machine reach outbound on port 8000 is a no go. So I've kind of gotten the habit of of uh, specifying the port at the end of the command. So let's just do 80 just to make things easy, okay? All right, so let's do this. Let's do w get, uh, 129, I think I'm 128, I wanna say, and let's grab Unix priv esque check, bam. And let's also grab Linux priv checker.py. Fantastic. All right, let's make these both executable and then uh, let's try Linux checker.py which I need to pre uh, prefix with Python so there we go we'll let that run its course and when it's all done it's really nice because uh, this might be kind of ugly here but it gives you oop, let's just go full screen on this beast gives you some relevant privilege escalation exploits. So I would usually start following these links and try to see if, if indeed it applies to uh, to this machine. Oh, also too, one of the one of the commands I usually run right away is this to kind of tell me, okay, I'm dealing with Ubuntu here, Ubuntu 16.04. All right, so then let's also run our Unix privesc check, which you can run as uh, standard or as detailed. So just for the sake of thoroughness, I'll run detailed, which will probably take a while. And once that's done, you'll see it gives you just gobs and gobs of data as far as potentially misconfigured files, folders, services, and the like. And, and I neglected to mention, I usually run it like this so that I get a big text file output that I can pull down and parse through with other tools a little easier. But I don't really go through this in any great depth unless I strike out with some of the other more uh, straightforward attacks. So, um, for example, what I'll do once I once I know, um, I think we looked at this already, but once I look, know, okay, we're dealing with uh, Ubuntu 16.04, I'd come to exploit DB and I would punch in 16.04. And it looks like there are a few potential matches. I, I read through these a little bit and this one appears like it might do 
the job for us. So I have already gone ahead and grabbed this exploit package. Uh, let me just kill this and make sure. Uh, there we go, 39772.zip. Okay, let's pop that web server back up again and let's get 39772.zip. Okay, there we go. So let's unzip 39772.zip. And we've got a whole bunch of subfolders. Let's dive into this one. And if we follow along with the instructions here, it talks about opening up the tar file, running the compile, and running double output. So let's do tar xvf, I think, on exploit.tar. There it is. And then we are going to run, uh, so I'm going to run compile first. And, oh. Nah. Oh, it's in a subfolder. Okay. Compile sh. And now we should have, yeah, a double, oops, double quit. Okay, now we wait patiently. Oh, yeah, there we go. Woohoo! So we should be able to go here. Take a look at what we got. And wouldn't you know, we win! All right, so there you go. There is one path of attack to uh, exploit the Stapler VM and get root privileges. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial walkthrough. Um, if, you, if you do like this, would you please uh, look at the bottom of your screen. There's my Twitter handle and my email address. I would really like to hear from you. If you want me to do more of these, um, I, I'd like to know because they take a lot of time to do. But if a lot of people are finding value out of them, if it's helping you in your uh, pen test practices and studies, uh, then I'll, I'll definitely do some more. So please reach out, let me know, and uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to 7 Minute Security, a thrice-weekly podcast covering IT and security news, pen test tips and tricks, and career advice. For more information, including a full episode guide, how-to articles, and sponsorship opportunities, visit www.7ms.us.